Hi, I'm Jennifer Hollick with the World War II Research and Writing Center and Finding the Answers Journey. I am sitting this morning in the Margraten, which is the Netherlands American Cemetery. And Johan and I are visiting a couple of his adopted graves and we'll also visit an unknown who's buried in the back who we believe really should be identified as John Gordon. Um, he was identified all except for one tooth during World War II when the graves registration was looking at identifying those who the identities weren't exactly easy to make. But his family said, unless you can positively identify him, we never want to hear from you again. So based on one tooth, everything else matched up. But because of one tooth, he is laying here as an unknown. So we will visit him as well. But the other day we were in Vogelsong in Germany and we visited that Nazi training facility and it brought up a lot of questions and I made a short video about that. And today, um, after watching, we caught part of an episode last night, some investigation thing on the History Channel or National Geographic on Mussolini and Hitler and coming to power and the rise of fascism today. And one, I haven't really studied this part of Italian history or Mussolini. I didn't realize he was in power for so long. Um, I didn't realize he created the war in Ethiopia in the 30s to form a distraction and um, try to stay in power. I didn't realize Hitler studied him. I learned quite a lot of things. Um, I think there are cows or geese behind me today. But it really, one of the things that one of the historians brought up was the, the notion of distraction. And Mussolini created a war because he needed a distraction. And we see this all the time in our world, especially in the United States with all of the distractions happening. But if we take a step back from, you know, world or big events and we look at our own lives, we all create distractions to not deal with the things that we want to deal with. So I invite you, number one, to look at that in your life. Where are you creating conflict or disease in your life, your body, your relationships, your business, um, in order to not deal with the things that you don't want to? And we all do this. Um, we kind of shove things down until they show up as something that doesn't let us ignore it anymore. This could be disease, um, just being sick for a few days, a trigger that sends you into a panic attack, you know, because you're in a certain place at a certain moment and everything comes bubbling up. So I invite you to look at that. But one of the other things I invite you to look at today that kind of was really clear in the program last night about Mussolini and actually even going back to last month when we were at the Mission Bell Memorial unveiling is this idea of education and remembrance. Now, in the Netherlands, I, I would have to say based on everything that I've learned or experienced in the last several years traveling in Europe, the Netherlands is the country that seems to remember and educate about World War II the most so that they don't forget, so that maybe they can prevent it from happening again in the future. And at the Mission Bell Memorial, um, a lot of speeches were given and one comment was made that the, the Dutch have lived in relative peace for almost 75 years. So the more recent generations have no idea what it was like to go through a hunger winter in Rotterdam or to have your father taken off as forced labor or to see your neighbors be taken away to a forced labor or concentration camp to never return. And the children here learn about this. They participate in the commemorative ceremonies that happen. And I'm not sure that really happens in other countries. I, I know in France, especially in Normandy, there are a lot of commemorations. A lot of people show up. I don't know if the children are educated, but looking at that program on Mussolini last night and how people are wanting a new Mussolini today in Italy, you know, I wonder, did the Italians forget? They've lived in almost 75 years of relative peace. Did they forget what happened? Did they not learn the history? Do they not see the patterns and that we're just continually in a loop to repeat the past? And I know in America, you know, I have three kids that are still in school and the way education has changed even since my high school senior started, you know, they don't learn the things that they used to and they get five minutes of any kind of military event history. 
So I know they're only learning certain things because I'm telling them and I'm making them question. And I tell them, don't believe everything that you hear. You need to question things. You need to know about these things. We need to remember. So I invite you from wherever in the world you're watching this to really look at whether or not you are remembering, whether you are educating, whether you are looking at the past and questioning what happened then and what's happening now in any area of your life, your country, your world. I think we really need to start stepping up, waking up and questioning and educating the next generation because we all see what's happening right now. So I invite you to do that. And then I invite you to look at the areas in your life where maybe you're not looking at the things that could be stopped, could be healed, released, where you could find some closure. And as I said in my video at Bogelsong, you know, our families have a lot of pain and trauma that's passed down. And while we, us right now, did not create what happened in the past. We didn't make those choices. We weren't involved in those experiences. We aren't responsible for the sins of the fathers, but we do carry them. So what can you do today to learn a little bit more about that, to release that, and to create a better future where we're not continually looping back into all of this horror from the past? I invite you today to look at that in your history. And then find a place where you can sit and think about the sacrifices that have been made throughout all of history. It isn't just World War II, even though that's what the cemetery focuses on. War happened since the beginning of time. So what can we do? What can we change in our families and our own selves to stop that? That's my invitation for you today. And find a beautiful place to sit and contemplate that.